What you'll hear from the political journalist Jeremy Hunt, he voted for Rishi Sunak. He's a Remainer from a different wing of the party to Liz Truss. I think the most important thing to know about Jeremy Hunt is he was health secretary from 2012 to 2018. So he has more responsibility than anyone for the crisis we are currently seeing in the NHS, which is due to understaffing. He oversaw that understaffing, by the way. And he was also the health secretary who failed to prepare for the pandemic. So that's why I don't think it's necessarily a genius political move. Um, to give him a heavy promotion. We are going to be talking a lot about the NHS this winter. And when I say we, I don't just mean we at Navarra Media, I mean the whole country. Tory MP Steve Bryan worked with Jeremy Hunt when he was Health Secretary. Bryan appeared on Radio 4's PM programme where he was asked this. The party is split, isn't it? You, you've got supporters of Liz Truss now who are really angry that she's ditched the policy she stood on. You've got her detractors saying she's as bad as we warned you about. Uh, how do you bring the party together? You can't, can you? Well, well we, we have to. I mean, at the end of the day, everybody, detractor or otherwise, should want this government to succeed. And what I know about Jeremy, he won't be licking his lips at the prospect of becoming chancellor this time, but th this is a moment to be there for the country. And in my experience of him, it's always been country first. And he will see that as his as his job right now. Uh, and that is the job that he's been asked to do. He will do it very well. I think you should see him, maybe you should see Liz Truss as the chairman and Jeremy Hunt as the chief executive. And I think he'll be a very effective chief executive. And, you know, like a new football manager coming in. Um, at the end of the day, the supporters are happy when the team's winning. So to be clear, the chairman, the chairman of a company, that tends to be, you know, a bit more of a notional role. They sort of stand there, they might chair the board, but it's the CEO, the chief executive, they're the one who has the real power. They're the one who makes the day-to-day -day decisions. So what's being suggested there is that essentially, you know, Liz Truss is going to become a symbolic figure and it's going to be Jeremy Hunt who's pulling the strings. You know, so it's one way to avoid a leadership election whilst, you know, getting rid of, of Liz Truss from policymaking who most of the Tory party now seem to think is a complete liability. Aaron, what do you make of that idea that it's now Jeremy Hunt who will, will be in charge, who will be pulling the strings? And what do you think he will he will bring to the to the British economy over the next, well, however long he, he manages to stay in that job. Jeremy Hunt is one of those people where it's the complete triumph of style over content. He's, he's nice looking. He's, he's, he's nice looking in a really inoffensive way, you know, clean shaven, smoothie chops, doesn't get angry, doesn't get upset, nice, calm, um, posh, was a management consultant, did PPE at Oxford, a bit like Cameron. You know, he's a little Cameronite mini-me. And I think in their, in their dire situation, a lot of Tories think, oh, this, this guy can get us out of a hole. Well, remember, David Cameron put you in a pretty big hole in 2016 by calling the Brexit referendum. And he also did a terrible job administering the economy from 2010 with George Osborne. So I think it, it shows a real paucity in the Conservative Party, not just of personnel, but ideas. Because... They're falling back to somebody like Jeremy Hunt, who's a complete non-entity. I think Jeremy Hunt as a Tory in the early 70s would have been an Edward Heath man. He would have been a centrist, right? I think he would have been um, a wet uh, if, Martha, if Margaret Thatcher had a, 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 encountered him in the mid-1970s, late 1970s, early 1980s. He may have been a Labour man after the Second World War. I, I don't really think he believes in very much. I think he's a good social climber. I think he's moderately intelligent. And I think effectively, he's one of those people who just believes the orthodoxy of the day. And in 2010, it was austerity. And today, it's something else. And in 10 years' time, it'll be something else again. Hopefully, something a lot more progressive and not as utterly destructive for ordinary working class people. So I don't think it tells us very much. But with somebody like that, Michael, I guess the upside is, for the Tory party, you have effectively the bond market running the government. Right when you get Jeremy Hunt in in this set of circumstances running the government, he's the he's the anti Kwasi Kwarteng. Right? He's the anti Liz Truss. He's not going to be a heterodox thinker. He's going to do exactly as he's told by the by the IMF. He'll do exactly as he's told by the CBI, the Confederation of British Industry, and the you know the uh, the Institute of Directors. They will just they will instruct him how to govern the country. And and to return to that kind of Leninist adage that you know government is effectively you know the, the state is the administration of affairs, the interests of the ruling class. I mean, okay, you, you can believe that or not believe it. Um, but I think, wow, you know, maybe Jeremy Hunt as the kind of Frank Underwood figure running a government from the Chancellor's office, basically in league with private enterprise, is probably as close as you're going to get to that. Jeremy Hunt, what has he done? Destroyed the NHS, stood to be leader twice and lost. 
You know, he's, it's not someone who should inspire great faith, although, as you say, I think he is someone who's not going to put up any resistance to the markets. And that's why, presumably, he will calm them, because it's essentially um, putting those guys in control. Uh -huh.